and good morning. It's Monday the 10th of July 2017. Another week has started, boys and girls, in our in our rapid quest towards September and October, November, and then Christmas Day. Ding dong, merrily on high. Have you had your breakfast yet? Huh? I'm sure you had yours earlier than mine, dear. Well, I don't know so much. I was up at eight o'clock, actually. The sun was coming in through the window. Um, woke up about eight o'clock, had my breakfast, which was the dried oats today. That's the layers, you see. Uh, for, uh, uh, fat-free yoghurt, blueberries, porridge oats, fat-free yoghurt, strawberries, because I'd run out of blueberries, and, uh, 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 and some oats on top. Very, very tasty. Now, do you prefer to have a full English? Being on the slimmest world, you can have that. Oh, yes. Just don't cake it in oil and all that stuff. You know, just basically the tiniest bit of oil or even better than that spray light. Uh, but do you go out for breakfast? That's the question. I found a little story here in, um, what is this one? The Daily Mail. <clears throat> the UK's cheapest full English breakfast. What do you reckon you can get a full English breakfast for, eh? I know, I think the Toby Carvery, or they were doing it for a while. I don't know if, if it was successful or not, but they were doing an all-you-can-eat breakfast, which was something like four ninety nine, which is an excellent value for money, don't you think? You know, tea, sausages, baked beans, tomato. You just shove it on your plate and eat as much as you want, you awful fat people. Eat, 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 eat. <laughs> I do the same. Well, it said... To be Britain's cheapest full English breakfasts at a modest one pound. Yes, you heard that right. One pound for full English breakfast. Uh, the fry up, which is sausage, bacon, tomato, beans, mushrooms, potato fritters and a round of toast is a sizzling hit with customers, particularly since the price was cut from one pound ninety nine. It's gone from one pound. How do they make any money out of that? Um, but if diners at Doncaster's number one cafe are not satisfied, the owners offer even more. For there are two pounds and three pounds options. Look at this. With double or treble the eggs, bacon and sausages. Oh, I mean, how much can you eat, dear? God's sake. And you see them, don't you, in the Toby Carvery, shoveling on as much as they can on that plate. <laughs> Oh, great big things, you know, needing one, two chairs, one for each cheek of their fat asses, dear. Eat, 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 that's all they do. Um, they also do a five pound option called the 54321, which is five sausages, four rushes of bacon, three eggs, two rosties. What the hell are they? Oh, potato fritters. OK, and one helping each of beans, mushrooms and tomatoes. Oh, I know. I'd love to have that. I'd have to have the five beans. I love baked beans. I, do you like baked beans? Uh, my preference, it was always the Heinz one, but my preference for baked beans is now the Branson ones. They're a bit thicker and I like to do baked beans until they're congealed. No, so they're not running anymore. That's how I prefer my baked beans. Um, drinks are extra, but a pot of tea is only £1.40 and coffee £1.60. Despite the generous portion size, uh, the lady and gentleman who run the place say they still turn a profit of 20 to 30 pence an order by shopping around for the cheapest ingredients. So there we are. That's in Doncaster. I mean, just a minute. Have they actually said they, that doesn't say the name of the cafe? Oh, that's good, isn't it? Well, it's a waste of time you're getting in the car now, then. Wouldn't you think you'd put the name of the cafe on there? The business partners opened at the start of the year in a former fish and chip shop and initially sold breakfasts for £1.99. But since they dropped the price three weeks ago, demand has been insatisfiable. Yesterday, there was even a queue outside. <laughs> oh, dear. They'd served 200 people and sold out of fried breakfasts by half past 12, 90 minutes before their normal closing time. Uh, the lady used to run a cake shop and still makes celebration cakes to order. We believe in charging a fair price. Most of us have had kids and we know how much things cost. The cafe seats 35 customers, uh, but the owners are looking to expand to accommodate up to 80 more. We're bracing ourselves for even bigger demand. Well, they'll have to take on more uh, staff, won't they? I hope not on those dreadful zero hour contracts. They're a terrible thing, aren't they? Zero hour contract. How can you work? I don't understand how you can work like that. Not knowing if you're going to have enough money this week to pay the rent or the week after you'll get twice as much or maybe nothing at all. 
<clears throat> I think it's a terrible thing, those zero-hour contracts. I really do. So that's the old full English breakfast there. I do know a lot of people now that... Um, now I wonder how we, we, we got to paying for breakfast, really. I mean, when I was a child, uh, even when I was working for British Telecom, I used to be a BT engineer. Uh, that would have been the early 80s, that one. And uh, now and again, we'd, we'd, we'd all meet up, you know, around about, I don't know, half past ten or something like that, in the Greasy Spoon Cafe, which was on the lower Richmond Road. Or was it upper Richmond Road? It might be the upper. Was it upper or lower? No, lower Richmond. It was on, or was it on, on Mortlake Road? Mortlake. I think it was on Mortlake Road. Mortlake Road in Richmond, just before uh, the, the, there's a roundabout where you go left to Richmond or right to Kew or straight on to the M3. So at the, just before that roundabout, there was a Greasy Spoon Cafe. And me and the boys uh, working for British Tele Telecom at the time, we would meet up there maybe once, twice a week for, you know, the, the full English breakfast, including chips included oh it was lovely it was lovely but we didn't do it all the time um i think there's always been people who you know ran sort of, sort of for their 11s or something like that you know they pop over to greg's the bakers for a couple of sausage rolls perhaps perhaps a pasty or something like that slice of pizza cup of tea which is all, all very nice but it wasn't like starbucks and costa coffee and pretta pretta manger whatever it's called, uh, you know, sandwiches for like five quid from the BP petrol garage and all that business. We didn't do all that. We had breakfast before we came out. Did you? A lot of people now, they, they go to work, they haven't had breakfast, they go to work and about 10 o'clock they get a bit hungry and they're straight over the shop and think nothing of paying five, six, seven quid, you know, for breakfast. You times that. What's seven times five is, oh, I don't know, 28, 30, you know, whatever. What, five, 36, so 30, 36 pounds a week on breakfast. 36, but have I got my calculator? No, it's not here today. <clears throat> 36 pound a week on breakfast. So in 10 weeks, that's 360 quid, isn't it? In 50 weeks, which is roughly about, and that's 369, 3, 12, it's like 2,000 pounds a year people are spending on breakfast. You can probably do it for about 60 quid by buying boxes of cereal or cooking it yourself at home. My mum used to do me breakfast sometimes uh, when I went to school. Whatever I wanted, mum, mum cooked me. I was a very, very lucky child to have parents like I had, I'll tell you that now. Anything I wanted to eat in the morning. But uh, they, they didn't hand out things left, right and centre like some parents do now. You know, kids start screaming and shouting, I want that, I want that, oh, all right, let's buy it. No, my dad taught me to save up for stuff. He used to give me pocket money every week, 10 pence. I'd order buy little post office stamps and save them in this book. And when I had enough money, I'd go and buy something. That's how, that's how I learned. Now, oh, do you want that? Oh, oh, I'll get that now. I'll get that now, you know, and all this business. You, you've got to teach children how to do money and all that business, don't you? Anyway, let's say hello to some people this morning. Do you go out to breakfast? Where do you go to breakfast? What do you have for breakfast? My fried breakfast now would consist of a whole tin of Branson baked beans, um, uh, 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 onions, I cheat with the onions. I buy packets of onions, red onions, you know, the really strong ones. I open those and put them in the uh, in the uh, in the frying pan and fry them in the fry light for a while. And also eight, two eggs. That's what I loved up two or three times a week as well. Oh, delicious, dear. Delicious. And not fattening. Not fattening at all. Good morning to Peter Hyde, who joins us this morning. Morning, Peter. Welcome to the show. Uh, Diane there. Morning, Diane. Have a lovely day. Claire Norton, morning. What a lovely sunny day. Oh, it's beautiful out there. And it's not too hot today. It seems, I don't know how hot it's going to get today, actually. I haven't looked at the weather. But it seems a very, very pleasant day. I've just popped outside the front. There are certain plants, I notice. Not all of them. Certain plants, that slight bit of sun, and they droop down. And you've got to give them water. So I've already done that this morning. Busy, 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 dear. I put my bins out. Pearl, who lives uh, three doors down. I, I, I bumped into her while she was putting her bins out. She was still in her dressing gown. Dreadful, dear. Come on, Pearl. Get dressed, dear. <laughs> Pearl, please, can you put some clothes on in the morning? Mind you, I've done it myself. I've gone out there and, you know, in, in, in a thong. Sometimes I wear my thong, which I sometimes wear in bed, you know. 
I just, I, I just, I just rush out and hopefully no one has seen me. But usually there's someone standing there, pointing and laughing actually, no, at me as I'm putting my bin out in my thong. I have a green. I've got three bins. There's a green one, which is like household rubbish. There's a blue one, which is like for tin cans and newspapers and cardboard. And there's a brown one, which is for my garden waste. Now, <clears throat> the garden waste. And all of them, they only come every two weeks. So today, it's general household waste, which is the green bin. Uh, and that is completely full up to the top. And the reason it's completely full up to the top is because Katie the cat and her pet mess that she does on her newspaper in the kitchen. And I have to say, the last couple of days, it's, it's getting worse and worse now. She seems, bless her heart, she seems to, um, she seems to go to the toilet while she's sitting down. And then she sits there. It's, it's getting quite difficult now. Hmm. I must have cleaned up poo three times yesterday. Of course, if you've got a child, you're completely used to that, I suppose, aren't you? Huh? I've, for, I don't think I've ever changed a child's nappy after it's done a poo. <laughs> oh, God. It, does it smell worse than cats? Come on, ladies, tell me. Or men. I'm sure some of the house husbands uh, that might be watching the show today have had that problem before as well, have you? <laughs> is it is it as bad as 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 smelly cat poo? <laughs> Baby poo. Anyway, so that was full up with newspapers, you know, caked in this stuff and and wee and what have you. Oh, and when I say f I'm literally full up to the top, and I had another bag of rubbish to put out as well. So I took my bin down. And you search around in the other bins, you know, see if there's one empty. Unfortunately, there was. So I put my rubbish in there. So that one comes like, and I love it. I love it when round about 11, 12 o'clock, I can go up there and take my bin and it's empty. Oh, it's lovely. Don't you like that? I feel a, a sense of satisfaction when the bin man has been and taken all that stuff away that I don't want anymore. Get rid of all the rubbish in the house. That's why no one lives there because here, because most of what's lived here with me before over 25 years has been rubbish, I'm afraid, lovey. And it must, and they must go out with the bins, dear. <laughs> I don't think I could ever live with anyone again. But maybe my sister, or members of her family. Um, but I, I can't, I can't honestly see me ever living with anyone again. It's just awful. Oh, they get my nerves, and they, they got little rituals and things like that that they have to do, don't they? Oh, and don't talk to me first thing in the morning, please. Sometimes the phone rings first thing in the morning. I'll quickly switch that off. Thank you very much. Oh, I haven't got my phone up here, have I? Oh, God, what if what if there's a delivery and someone calls at the door? I won't, oh, yes, I will in the bell. I've got a plug-in thing downstairs, haven't I? Yes, we, I love to get rid of all the rubbish, both inanimate and animate. Humans, get out of the house, please. Leave me alone. Do not talk to me first thing in the morning. Are you the same? Do you talk to people first thing in the morning or not? Oh, I can't stand it. Uh, good morning to Lyndon. Morning, Lyndon. Hope you're well, sir. Uh, are you in uh, New Zealand? Whereabouts are you at the moment, Lyndon? You are the, you're, you're the chap who I was on New Norfolk Island with, I think, uh, some years ago now. That is you, isn't it, Lyndon? I can't remember now. Do, do come back to me and tell us. Uh, Peter, plays, uh, Peter pays £3.99 for his full English breakfast. Do you really? Oh, that's a lot of money. Actually, it's not, is it? I think Travel Lodge, is it Travel Lodge or Premier Inn or something like that? They do one for like eight ninety nine. I think I'd feel peeved paying 10 quid for a full English breakfast. That would be too much. No, but I'd go up to about five pounds, I would. I'd pay five, but of course I don't eat meat anymore. I'm vegetarian, so I mean, I suppose I'd be a bit restricted. But you can fill up your plate with all sorts of stuff, mushrooms, onions... Fried eggs, scrambled eggs, baked beans, of course, toast. Or, oh yes, yum, 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 fried bread. When's the last time I had a piece of that? About a year ago, I think. I love fried bread. We used to go to Pontins for holidays in the 1970s. And at that time, it was all in, you know, if food included as well. And they used to do this fried bread. And I don't know how they did it, but it was golden. And it was absolutely delicious. How many calories in a piece of fried bread? Let's have a look. Calories in fried bread. Calories in fried bread. Let's have a look at this. 
There's got to be a lot. Oh, 330 calories in one piece of fried bread. God, and I could sit there and have four of those, couldn't you? Love fried bread. Good morning to John, who says, Blimey, I've had to turn down the brightness on my screen. Your shirt is bright. Do you like the red today? We're, we're, we're testing out Labour Red today. Look, it's got bingo. It's, actually, you could fly in this, I reckon. It's got a bit big since I've lost the weight. <laughs> Morning, John. Morning, Jake. Hope you're well, Jake. How's the guitar playing going? I hope you're playing well. Ding, 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 ding. Very good friend of mine, Ray Reynolds, plays a ukulele. Did you know that, Jake? He's very good. He popped down to the karaoke last night. Very nice man, Ray Reynolds. Um... <clears throat> Uh, John says, I was a sport kid, five big sisters. Were you the only boy? Oh, so you was the favourite, weren't you, John? If you had five girls and you was the favourite with your mum, I know that. I know that. Good morning, Lily. Morning, Lily. Sp I hope you're not spending too much money on your breakfast this morning. Good morning, Jason Alexander. Can you play Sunita? Uh, we're not doing requests, dear. Not for you or any of your friends. Will people not ask me? I'm not a DJ anymore. I gave it up. I'm not a DJ. I'm a host. Host, dear. Host. Karaoke host. Quiz night host or music host. That's not a DJ. DJs work in clubs. Don't do clubs anymore. Thank you very much. Oh, Ray Reynolds is with us this morning. There she is. Uh, good morning, Ray. Uh, Adam says the IKEA breakfast is one ninety nine. Ah, oh, now that's reasonable. Yes, I think I've had one of those a long time ago. My gods, yeah. That would have been when I went and bought my uh, TV unit that's downstairs. That's got to be uh, 1999, that was. I remember when that was. Because we were going out with someone at the time called Lee. He was Welsh. I think he's down in Bristol or somewhere. I've lost contact with him, yes. One ninety nine for breakfast at Ikea. Well, that's very handy. You can, you can buy the table to eat it on while you're sitting there, can't you? I'm liking the sound of that. Thank you, Lily. Lily likes the shirt this morning. Thank you, Lily. I like to revolve my shirts now and again, my darling. I like to revolve them. Uh, John says, I had one big brother. I was the blue-eyed baby boy. Were you a little pretty thing, were you? Oh, what happened? <laughs> what happened? There's a phone line open. If you want to call in uh, this morning, it's open there, OK? 20 3477 What did you have for breakfast this morning, eh? Please don't tell me you didn't have breakfast. Very, very bad. Very, very bad not to have breakfast in this morning. What did you have? I told you what I had. Overnight oats. A little storage jar from Slimmer's. I've just found a, a Slimmer's World book here that Adam gave me. And I'd completely forgotten about it. I want to make... I don't know if I've got time to do it today. There's a th there's chilli beans. Actually, I think that's in here. Or oh, that might be in the vegetarian one downstairs. Let me have a look. Chilli beans. Is it in here? Is there, a, is there an index? No index. No, I didn't think there would be. Oh, hang on, this, yes, there is. Hang on, chilli... I can't see the writing, dear. Eyes are getting worse and worse. I can't be doing with those contact lenses. Has anyone got contact lenses? Oh, no. Having that thing attached to your eye? No, thank you. Chilli beans, is it there? Chickpeas, ch classic. No, it's not there. Chill, chicklistic. No, that's not... Maybe it's beans. Beans, chicken, and... Uh, uh, that's not... In, oh, cube, no, that's not there either. No, it must be in the other book. Chili beans, which is like different types of beans, including baked beans, uh, red kidney beans, and you put them in a pot with uh, some spices and stuff like that, and of course, lots of lovely chili. Oh, here's a question for you: chili flakes or chili powder? Can you tell me the difference, please? Because I've seen both of them on sale at Waitrose, and I don't know which ones what 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 the difference is really. I'm imagining chili flakes are hotter. I don't know why. I just think the chilli flakes might be hotter. I have used chilli powder before. Usually I like to use fresh chilli or or um, or frozen, which you can get now. You haven't got to touch it, worry about all that oil stuff and touching your eye afterwards. Oh, dreadful, dreadful, dreadful. Chilli beans, that's what I'll make. What's the difference, please, between chilli flakes and chilli powder? Please let me know. 20 is uh, my phone number. Okay. Um, <clears throat> watching, uh, as I say, excellent night at the karaoke last night. We do karaoke every Sunday night. That's at the Cams and I. Uh, and apparently last night, while it was going on, there was a fire in Camden Market. And now that is so close 
to where I was working last night. I would have walked up the road, round the corner, and I would have been there. Although I, I'm not quite sure if it started afterwards or while we were doing the show. I got back here and there was a couple of messages on uh, Facebook. I noticed that Camden, Lock, uh, Camden Market was on fire. Uh, but I've got to say, you know, we left there. I was back in the car around about 10 past 11 last night and on my way home. I didn't hear or smell any fire or see any fire engines. Like It possibly started just about afterwards. Um, it's in several of the papers this morning, including the Daily Mail. It says, terrified witness burst into tears after watching 70 firefighters last night battle a huge blaze at London's famous Camden Lock Market. And it's quite a good market. You get all sorts of stuff there. You go along the Camden High Street, there's all these um, uh, shops selling leather goods, if you like all that stuff, you know, leather coats. And reasonable prices as well. Very, very reasonable prices. And there's loads of them. You walk up, you don't never buy the first one, you know, go in a few shops and then you go back to the cheapest one. Uh, a lot of them sell the same sort of stuff. But if you like leather stuff, you know, uh, uh, beautifully designed jackets and things like that, it's all down there in Camden, uh, uh, along Camden High Street and, of course, in Camden Market, which was on fire last night. It says, giant smoke clouds could be seen for miles across the capital when 10 fire engines rushed to tackle the blaze just before midnight on Sunday. Ah, it must have happened after we left then. <clears throat> oh, you're lucky to get back out of there. It would have been carnage around there, dear, the traffic and what have you. I would never have got home. People who saw the inferno feared the building would explode at any moment because a number of kitchens and restaurants were nearby. Others described the crazy, crazy scenes. And one teenager said the blaze was like a disaster movie. Oh, you just imagine that going up. It, that, I, I'm just looking at pictures now of the, uh, of the fire and it looks really bad. The fire service says it's too early to say where the fire started or whether anyone has been injured. Part of Camden High Street was blocked off while crews battled to get the fire under control with members of the public urged to stay clear of the area. Um, this lad uh, told the Evening Standard it was like a disaster movie happening in front of your eyes. It was an awful thing to see. I was in tears. Everyone is praying that there was no one inside. Speaking to Mail Online, a spokesman for the London Fire Brigade said they had no increase in the number of uh, they had no increased the number of firefighters on the ground. Um, a witness says I was passing by when I saw the fire, and they started to get the firefighters and police. It was all very fast. So. Um, Yes, I, I mean, I didn't see it, or it, it must have just happened just as I finished there. I mean, that was lucky, wasn't it? Eh? Anyway, hopefully no one would have got caught there. Presumably there wouldn't have been anyone working in Camden Market at um, at, uh, at, at midnight on a Sunday. Although they do have uh, quite a few um, homeless uh, type people. Uh, around that area who are always sort of sitting on the paper begging uh, for money and that sort of thing and I don't know if anyone any of those they might have been in there trying to sleep or something like that so we wait to see what that is on the news but I've had the news on this morning I had the BBC news on this morning and um, I had no mention of it which is a bit odd isn't it really I didn't see any mention of the news or maybe I joined it a little bit too late I don't know it was all about what was the news this morning about Trump and uh uh, Putin, I think, having a bit of a conversation and Theresa May um, doing some bits and pieces. I didn't say anything about the fire. Uh, good morning to Craig. Good morning, Craig. Hope you're well today. Nice to see you appearing. I didn't see you last week. He said uh, he's got a day off today. What are you going to do with your day off, Craig? Hey, I hope you've got something constructive to do. None of this duvet day business, dear. Will you just gr get out of bed? walk to the city and you stay on there until it's bedtime again. Oh, that's just horrendous. No, Craig, no, dear. Go out and do something constructive. Or a little bit of a walk or a swim somewhere, perhaps. Yes. John says, I bet you're always full of wind with all the beads. You know, strangely not, John. I used to have that problem terrible years ago, but it, it just stopped. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, I like baked beans. We like baked beans. Good. Um... So I came home uh, last night and uh, uh, I had the other half of my uh, rice risotto for uh, just before I went to bed. I did actually open a tin of beans and put that on there as well. So I had rice risotto and uh, a tin of beans. And then I, I watched a bit of television. Uh, Pole Dark. Anyone watching Pole Dark? I love it. I love Pole Dark. I don't remember the original series in the 70s. 
But uh, of course, I watched it last year. Has it been on three years now, Poldark, or is it just two? Anyway, an excellent uh, old-fashioned type, you know, programme. And it's about uh, a family feud, really, between the Poldarks and the War... Is it War Duggans or something like that? And uh, this... Uh, 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 they're cousins. And this War Duggan, this bloke, I can't think of his name now. He's married to Elizabeth, isn't he? Uh, he's just horrible. All he is, he just wants power all the time. And he's recently become a magistrate at all, which has made him even worse. Oh, he's ghastly. And then there's a young girl in it who's singing, seeing a young boy. She's had to dump him because the War Duggan bloke, I think it's War Duggan, uh, has arranged kind of a marriage for her. And the bloke she's marrying is just horrible. He's disgusting. You wouldn't want to go near him with a barge pole. He's vile. Vile, vile, vile. But uh, she's been convinced to marry the, that bloke rather than the one she loves because of hopefully healing some sort of rift in the family. But it'll never be healed. My favourite character, I think, is the old lady, the, 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 the grandmother. Oh, she's great. She's evil. She's really evil towards uh, the nasty cousin. So I enjoy that, Paul Dark. Uh, anyone else watching that, Paul Dark? Excellent series. You might have to go back to the beginning if um, you know if if you can uh, uh, if you can't. Uh, you can probably pick it up from anywhere. Actually, it's one of those programs. A little bit like a soap opera. EastEnders or um, well, I don't know what else. Uh, Neighbours or something like that. You can kind of jump in, can't you? And very quickly, you'll be you'll be sucked into it. I don't watch any soaps at all. I mean, I watched Casualty. That was a bit limp this week, wasn't it? Casualty. And no Doctor Who anymore. Got nothing to do on a Saturday. You would think they'd replace that with some sort of drama thing, wouldn't you? Instead of that, is it Let's Sing and Dance thing? Oh, I'm sick to death of seeing talent shows now. It's all a bit much, really, I must admit. Uh, so, uh, watched Pole Dark. Um... Then I went to bed. Uh, my my air conditioning in the bedroom's got a, a little bit noisy. It's making some really strange sounds. So I might take it back to home base and um, get an exchange. But I haven't got the box, of course, or some of the bits that came with it. But I've got the main unit, so I'm wondering if they'll just take the main unit, if it, take a new one out of the box, give that to me, put that in the old, in the new box, and kind of do it a little bit like that. Really, it's got noisy, weird noises. are like gushing noises. <laughs> And there's no regularity to the noises. It's very odd. It's a bit like me singing at karaoke. <laughs> we got some great singers at that Cam's and I, you know. Some really, really good singers come down on a Sunday night. I don't know where they come from. Really, really good people. And um, uh, meeting, we're, we're, we're starting to attract our own little crowd there now, which is great. Fantastic. Our own little crowd coming along to the Cam's and I. Uh, every, it's every Sunday between 8 and uh, around about 10.45 sort of time. It does get busy in there, I warn you. If you get in at 8 o'clock, you'll probably sing three songs. If you get in at half past nine, you'll be lucky to do one, really. It does get busy later on. So get in there early, and then you get your three songs in there as well. As I got in there last night, actually, I got there about... Uh, it was a little bit later. I wasn't late, but I like to be somewhere at least 45 minutes before I'm due to start. That's what I like. I actually aim to be there an hour to 45 minutes before I start. However, sometimes traffic the way it is, and I got there about, about half an hour before I was due to start. So I was still up and ready. I can, get, I can be ready in 10 minutes, honestly. We can get going in 10 minutes, although not everything will be set up. There will be someone singing within 10 minutes of me getting to a place. Really, as quick as that. But I like about 45 minutes to check, check everything's working and all that business, you know. Can't be turning up at the last minute. So we got going. I think we started early last night, around about 10 to 8, because we already had singers there. When I got there at half past seven, there was always an, already a little table of people waiting to sing, headed by the great Roy. Roy with the glasses. You know Roy with the glasses, OK? John says the star of Pole Dark is a heartthrob, but he's a munchkin, really small. Is he really? Is the Pole Dark bloke a little, little munchkin? So is Kylie Minogue. She's very small as well, isn't she? Little Kylie Minogue. I should be so lucky, 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 lucky. <laughs> you are with a voice like that, love. <laughs> morning to Dino Tracy. He's joining us as well this morning. Good morning, Dino. 
Hope you're well today. Don't forget, there's a phone line open, boys and girls. If you want to call in about anything at all, it's 020 8144 3477. Okay, 020 8144 3477. Uh, there's a Skype as well. The Skype name is United Kingdom Talk. Right, so uh, as I say, noisy air conditioning. I, I might ring up Sainsbury's, uh, not Sainsbury's own, but just home base and ask them uh, if they've still got the large one in stock because I did look on the um, website this morning and the large one isn't on there anymore. So I, it's possible that they haven't got any more of those, in which case I guess I just have to put up with the one. That's the one in my but I've got two air conditionings. One in the bedroom, that's a cheap one, like from home. But I say cheap, you know, it's still 300 quid. But it's like a push around when I've got a proper one in here, which is silent. See, that's on. Can you hear that? You might hear kind of a little bit of air. But the one in the bedroom isn't... I mean, it, it wasn't... It, it, it's going to be noisier anyway, because that's the one unit. Whereas the one in here is two units, you know. A unit in here and a unit outside. The big fans outside. The one in the bedroom, it's all in one. So it's it's going to be noisy anyway. But it's it's making odd noises that don't kind of sound right. You can understand a motor going around, you know, kind of quite hum of a motor. Oh, talking of no, talking of hums, uh, does anyone listen to Nick Abbott on LBC? He's on Friday and Saturday nights, ten till one. He's an excellent uh, host, an excellent, very, very funny, one of my favourite people on LBC. Uh, but I've noticed whenever he's on, there's like a, a hum behind him, like that, a hum behind him, uh, like a like a low pitched hum. Has anyone else noticed that with Nick Abbott? Or maybe I, I wonder if it's I've got the bass turned up too much on the car. I started listening to classical music in the car, yes. So uh, anyway, it's like a hum he's got. And I, maybe that's his air conditioning. And I understand like the, the standard line air conditioners, they're going to be noisy. I can understand a hum, you know, a, a regular hum. Like that. But this one's going whoosh, whoosh, and it's, it's not regular. Which makes me wonder that there's something wrong with it. I don't know. Um, John says, leave my Kylie alone. I should be, oh, that Kylie Malone. Oh, don't say that about Kylie. Don't say that about Kylie. Leave our Kylie alone. <laughs> we love Kylie. Shut up. Shut up. Not as much as I love Barry Manilow, but there we are. Ah, uh, oh, good morning to Anna Jane Knight. Good morning, Anna. She's in Australia. Uh, hello, cousin Anna. She says, hello, Cousin Chris. Hello. Uh, with Cousin Vince, Anna and Lizzie. Tickle, tickle. Lizzie. Lizzie was eight years, I think eight years old the last time I saw her. So eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen now. Fourteen, thirteen, twelve, thirteen, fourteen years old she must be now. And I babysat for her once. This was on a little, uh, my cousin Vince is um, a police officer. Uh, quite high up in Australia, and he was running the police force for a while on a, a, a beautiful little island called Norfolk Island, which is in the uh, in the Pacific Ocean. It's it's tiny. Oh, it's t I mean it's really really tiny this place, but it's a beautiful place and it has a community on there. I have a small police force which my cousin ran for a while, and um, I went over there twice uh, to see him. You have to fly to Australia. I think possibly and New Zealand as well. And then from there you fly uh, onto this island and they have their own customs and all that business. And it's a beautiful little place. Yeah, if you're looking for a holiday where it's all fast and nightclubs and tearing in the water on those little motorbike things on water. Uh, or motor, what are they called? Jet skis. If you want that, no, that's not the holiday. If you want a nice, quiet, relaxing holiday, that is the place to go. It is beautiful there. It is absolutely beautiful. Very tempting to retire somewhere like that. And uh, I got involved with a community mainly because of my cousin. Um, I got involved in the community there. I did a couple of uh, a little DJ nights for which they uh, got me a couple of gifts, which are here somewhere. Where are they? I've got my certificate there. The, where's the clock? What have I done with a clock? It's here somewhere. It's probably, uh, it's, it's, uh, is it under there? Hang on a minute. Let me see if I can find this clock, hang on. It's here somewhere, dear. Has it got stuck somewhere? It's under there, hang on. Oh, there it is. There it is. I've got it. There we are. My Norfolk Island clock, which is here, you see? Which they gave me. Here we are. Summer 2010. Oh, my God. Hang on. How, how old is Lizzie now, then? Oh, she must be about... Is she about 15? 
She's about 15 lot and they signed it here. This they gave me this for doing um the Blue Late Council um uh disco for there were two two nights. One one was for the teenagers and one was for the little people. And uh, actually the little people uh, that that one went better. Teenagers, well, you know what they're like, you know. Oh, oh who's this bloke, you know? And they were all right. They were all right to me, actually. I found one of them that wanted to be a DJ, so I kind of uh, just showed him the controls and uh, let him go on with it. You know, that they bought me that. Isn't that lovely? I had to declare this, though, when I went back into Australia, because you're not allowed to take in wood products and food or anything like that. They're worried about, like, worms or something like that, or, or insects in the wood. But uh, the bloke took this out. I went straight over. I said, I think I need to declare this. He said, oh, what you got there, mate? So I said, I've got this wooden thing they've given me. He said, OK, so let's have a look at it. And he looked all over it. He said, no, it's been sealed, isn't it, with um, varnish. I said, well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what I'm allowed and what I'm like. No, he said, no, that'll be fine. I said, OK. And I said, um, do you want to have a look in the rest of the case? He said, no, that's fine, mate. Just go straight through. And that was that. So I bought this back and uh, a very treasured possession. Se I didn't realise it was seven years since I went there. 2010, that was, in the summer. It, it really is a stunning place. And um, if you want to go somewhere, that's that's right off the beaten track. You know, it's... It's nice. That's not to say it's it's backward. It's not backward. They've got all shops and food. You don't, <laughs> you don't have to go out and catch your own chickens or kill your own pigs or something like that. It's all in the shop in pre-packaged. Uh, who works in the shop? Mrs. Bucket. She works in the supermarket. And um, there's a wonderful lady there called Alison Christian. She works in the like tourist part of it. And you can take little buses and go on tours. And there's lots to do, but mainly a beautiful, relaxing place. And it's just stunning there. My cousin worked uh, uh, running the police there. So I got involved in that. And I played the organ there. There's two churches on the island. There's uh, no, th three churches. There's two Church of England ones and a Catholic one. I don't know if there's any others. Uh, there's one chip shop on the island. Uh, there's one street lamp on the island, which is on the one roundabout. Oh, I, 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 I just know the place like the back of my hand almost. I loved it there. Absolutely loved it there. And um, the, the, the organ, I played the organ while I was there. What happened there? I got, again, and I got involved in the little radio station. I have a community radio station there, which is like this, this building in the middle of nowhere. It's weird. And you, you walk through these little paths and there it is, the radio station. All the windows are open. There's no soundproofing. All the windows are open and it's like a... it's like, How can I explain it? It's like a small bungalow, really. And it's got all the equipment, a great big aerial outside. And that's the, the radio station for the island. And um, I got talking to the people there. Uh, again, my cousin introduced me. And I did... A, uh, I think I did... Did I do two shows in there or one show I did? Which was quite nice. I did a show uh, on the radio there. Um, and I can't remember what it was now. Oh, yes, I remember, yes. I went to see, I went to see one of the churches. Now, St. Can't remember the name of the church now, but it was a really old school church. And I spotted a, a very old pipe organ in the corner. And I'm going around there and I said to someone, I said, oh, does that work? said, oh, yeah, yeah, we, we have uh, people playing that. I said, oh, fantastic. He said, do you play? I said, yeah. He said, oh, do you want to have a go? I said, oh, yes, please. So he turned this thing on. Thing on and all the air starts pumping into it, right? I go, <laughs> and it fills up with air, okay? And I started playing it, and I was playing church hymns, really. And uh, then I finished, and he says, "Oh, do you want do you want to come down?" It was it was a lady. Now what well, I can't remember her name now. It was a lady. She said, "She said, do you mind if we got a few friends together one afternoon and we could have a little bit of a sing song, nothing too big or anything like that?" I said, "Yeah, you can if you want to." She said, "When are you free?" I said, "Well, whatever day you want, really. I'm just here seeing my cousin. I haven't got anything arranged or anything like that." She said, "How about Friday, about three o'clock?" I said, "Yeah, okay. I'll see you Friday at three o'clock." She said, "It'll just be a few friends and that." I said, "Okay, right." So um, 
I went back to uh, my hotel, I think, and uh, was doing things and what have you. Uh, whenever I go on holiday, I like to stay in a hotel or my own place. I like my front door. You know, I could have stayed with my cousin in his house, no problem at all. But I've got this thing, you know, I, I just like my own front door. You know, get away, thank you very much, goodbye, close the door, on your own. You know, I'm a bit like that, right? Um, uh, but cousins and aunts are always offering you places. It's like my sister, you know, I could stay at my sister's house when I go up north, but I don't hire a caravan. Like that own front door. Lock that door, dear. Keep them out. <laughs> um, and then the next morning, I was woken up by my uh, little alarm clock in the hotel. When I say hotel, it's more... It's not like a blocks, you know, tower blocks. It's more like a resort. So everything is low level. It's just one, one, um, one level, OK? So I was woken up and I'm listening to this local radio station. And it came, comes on. And on Friday, all are invited to an organ recital. Chris Reardon is over from the UK and he's going to give an organ recital at, I think, was it St. Peter's or something like that? And I'm like, you what? <laughs> Where did that come from? Of course, once it was announced, I didn't have a clue. I thought, oh, my God, I thought I was only going to go there and play a few tunes for a few friends. An organ recital? I can't even read music. Anyway. So I thought, well, I'll, I'll better prepare something now. So I started, immediately I got out of bed, had my breakfast, and I started writing a list of things that I thought might be suitable. And I wrote down hymns and tunes. Now, there's a few English on the island as well. And um, so I, I wrote down things like Land of Open Glory, I Still Call Australia Home, Walsing Matilda, Rule Britannia, and some hymns, you know, praise my soul, the king of heaven, how redeem a king divine, the Lord's my shepherd, and that sort of thing. And I thought, well, so anyway, I thought, I thought, and I, you know, and Friday came. And all week this had been announced on the radio. Every time I turned it on, they were blooming well talking about this. I never agreed to do any organ recital, but you were sucked into the community. And um, the Friday came and I got to the top. Oh, well, I, went, I don't want to be too late. I'll get there about quarter two. Got there at quarter two. I walked through the door. The church was packed. <laughs> uh, honestly, it was completely full up. I haven't seen a church like that for years since I was going to school. And I'm, I'm walking in smiling, but I'm thinking to myself, oh, my God, what have you got yourself into here? And there was a, another bloke playing an organ as well. And he saw me. I'd already met him from one of the tours. He said, oh, hello, Chris. He said, I'll get out of the way for you. I said, oh, no, please don't. Carry on. I said, I can't believe all these people are turned up like this. He said, well, it's unusual for them, you see. It's unusual. Anyway, I played the hymns, played the tunes. Um, people sung along. And it was a lovely afternoon. And I'm so pleased it happened, to be honest. Uh, it, it, it really was. But it was a shock. <laughs> <laughs> that's the trouble when you do you get involved in communities and you get sucked in to do all this other stuff but that's okay that's okay and I, I enjoyed doing it really really enjoyed doing it I had a bit of a problem on the second visit there I had a problem with my leg I got sciatica in my leg I had to go to the hospital there which was okay but you know when you saw the hospital oh I don't know about this it looks like it's something from out of the 1950s dear I, I don't know if you were seriously ill how well they'd cope with that but presumably they'd be alright Back to some of your messages there. Um, Dino said, oh, it's his fan in the studio, is it, with Nick Abbott? Oh, is that what it is? It does make a buzz. So you've heard it as well, have you? Yeah, I thought so. Uh, Anna said, oh, Lizzie is 10 now. Oh, she's only 10. So she would have been 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3 years old when I first met her. 3. And when I babysitted for her, she would have been 5. I think... Did I go two years in a row or was there a gap in between? I can't remember now. But Lizzie is um, my cousin's uh, little girl and Anna is his wife. Oh, let's have a look. Uh, Vince says, I'll make sure you get transported there when you get committed to Australia. <laughs> Do you think there'd be a little job for me on the island, uh, Vince? Little job, I could take over the running of the radio station. All that it was two years in a row, was it? Oh, okay. So that's uh, so it must have, she must have been three and then four years old. And when I babysat for her, I know don't, don't really do babysitting. I don't think I've ever done babysitting. But uh, cousin Vince and his wife, they wanted to go out for a night. And said, "Do you mind babysitting?" I said, "No, no, that's okay." And uh, Lizzie, 
they had they they stayed. I think it was a police house, you know, on this island. They had this most beautiful house. Oh my word! I mean, if you just saw outside the and had banana trees in the garden, banana trees going up the the most beautiful veranda, and you could sit on there and have breakfasts and conversations and just look out. It it wasn't a long distance view, I don't think, from what I remember, but it was all green, you know, bushes growing up. And on this island, there are no nasties. There's no snakes, no spiders, no scorpions, nothing, no nasties on this island. They're all in Australia. You know, I've told you many times before, very dangerous place, Australia. Crocodiles are walking down Sydney High Street while you're trying to do your shopping from Woolworths. It's terrible. Terrible, you know, snapping away at your bags. You have to run. You have to run with your shopping bags. These crocodiles are after you, mate. <laughs> like that they are. Dreadful. Spiders jumping out at you all of all places. Snakes sliding up your trouser leg while you're trying to sit on the toilet. It's awful. Awful. You go to Australia, you make sure you flush that toilet first. They're hiding under the rims. Endless spiders, dear. <laughs> <gasps> oh, anyway, back to the island. Uh, where was I now with that? Yeah, there's no nasties on the island at all. Really is a beautiful place. Stunning, stunning, stunning. Uh, good morning to Ashley Smith, who's with us this morning. Uh, John says, no, stop that, John, dear. I am, I can play church organ, I'll have you know. Thank you very much. Apparently there are some grave digging jobs in Australia. I don't know if I want to be dealing with dead bodies. Much I think I've been with a few of those in my time, to be honest. Dead bodies. <laughs> I could I could do a show. Is that lady still doing the radio show on the island? Oh, I can't remember what her name was now. Oh, she was. She was. They were very kind to me on the island. They really were. Uh, and back to the house. Yeah, you had the most beautiful veranda. It was a big house. Um. It's own little path going down to it, and cars underneath there. They gave they, they, the, the the lovely people of the island gave gave me because I was doing this this DJing for them, you know, uh, for that. They, they let me uh, have the use of a car while I was there as well. I think it was Allison's car actually, and uh, oh, it was a great old car that was. The paint was peeling off the front. Oh, it was fantastic. I loved it. Loved that car. They got rid of it apparently. The next time I had to a box standard higher car, which was no fun at all, to be honest. I preferred the one that was falling apart. <laughs> Darlene Buffett, that's it, Dolls. Dolls, that's the one, yes. She did um, uh, did a radio show. I think she's back on there now, actually. The only thing is you can't listen to Norfolk Radio. I don't think they do streaming. The internet there is really, really slow. I mean, really slow. It's It's so slow that when you load up a picture, you know, you have to wait for it to come down on the screen. Uh, years ago, I, they don't have a cable direct to the island, I don't think. It's all done by satellite. Um, and um, uh, they, they were hoping to get a cable. There was a cable coming from somewhere to Australia, and they were hoping to get it to go via the island, but but it didn't happen, unfortunately. Um, quite an expensive place to live. The, the people there are generally a lot of the houses. Oh, Alison's, uh, Alison's house... Uh, her view is of the ocean. I'm, I'm telling you, the view she has is worth tens of millions of dollars. It absolutely is. And yet a lot of the people on the island have no money. Funny, really, isn't it? You know, you've you got the house, but you've got, you got no money. A lot of solar power there as well, which is quite good. Yeah, fantastic place to visit. Norfolk Island, highly recommended. All right, boys and girls, uh, we'll have to wrap up now because uh, my mate's coming around shortly and we're going swimming. Got to do today's birthdays. Uh, happy birthday today to Daniel Pitin Pitino. Daniel Pitino, excellent uh, singer he is. He's 32 years old today. Happy birthday, Daniel. Uh, Ian Ellis. Ian Ellis uh, runs pubs. I think he's an area manager of several pubs now. Uh, I never actually quite got to work with him. It nearly happened several times. But our dates, what he wanted and what I wanted in dates, uh, never unfortunately matched up. So I never got to work with you, Ian. Uh, but I'm sure it would have been fun. Happy birthday to you, Ian. Uh, Sean M. Curran, 45 years old today. Happy birthday, Sean. Uh, Nicolette. Green Gelly, I hope I've said your name right, is 53 years old today. Happy birthday, Nicolette. Stuart McCullough, 
color, 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 39. Have I got that right, Stuart? If I haven't, then a thousand apologies. Student McCullough. I reckon that's how you say it. Yes, happy birthday to you. Alan Hopley, it's his birthday today. Greetings, Alan. Uh, Bobby G, happy birthday, Bobby. Bobby G, wow. Happy birthday to you, sir. And William Sonoma, it's his birthday as well today. So let's sing the song, gang. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Yes, birthday people, happy birthday to you all. Uh, oh, uh, Vince says, taking Dad up to see Arsenal plays Sydney City and Western City Wanderers this week. Uh, we'll catch up with cousin Tim, Joe and the kids and Uncle Martin and Auntie Elaine. Also Steph before she takes off to the gut. We'll have a nice time up there. Have a nice time uh, in uh, Sydney. That's a beautiful city, that is. It really is Sydney, isn't it? That's it for the show today, boys and girls. Thank you very much for joining me, as always. Uh, tonight, I'll be hosting... Oh, hang on. Where's that gone? Oh, that, that camera's not working. Never mind. Let's go back to that one. Uh, tonight, I'll be hosting... Is that one working, then? Oh, that one's on, isn't it? Yes. Tonight I'll be hosting uh, karaoke. It's Monday night karaoke. Every Monday night uh, between 8 and 11.30. That's at Central Station Bar in Wharfdale Road, Kings Cross. Starts at 8 o'clock and finishes at 11.30. Every Monday night, including tonight, do join us for uh, karaoke at Central Station Bar in Wharfdale Road, Kings Cross. Enjoy your Monday and I'll see you again very soon. Cheerio now.